ladies and gents, leaking batteries like this can easily damage your electronics equipment. And indeed it has, it's damaged this Concept2 rowing machine computer. The great news is after doing a little bit of work, we have been able to fix it back up and actually get it all up and running again. Continue watching this video to find out how to do that, or at least my way how to do it. And today on GBS Engineering, in the shed, we have a Concept2 rowing machine computer and I have actually removed all of the screws from this in preparation to make this video. Uh, it's handed over to me for repair by uh, one of my kind neighbours and um, he tells me that he's left the batteries in there for a little bit too long and as you can see these batteries are in indeed quite bad shape having removed them from the battery compartment a lot of leakage one more than the other what are we gonna find in this is it gonna be a completely dead circuit board or are we gonna be able to neutralize the acid and get this up and running again let's just have a quick look at the battery compartment and oh my goodness yeah let's, uh, let's get you in there so you can see yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty messy in there, isn't it? And the terminals are looking quite corroded as well. Let's get the covers off this thing, find out what it's made of, which is always the interesting part, if you ask me. And in here you can see a lot of crystalline. Immediately you can see a lot of crystals from the batteries so I think that's going to need a wash. Right, it's only a piece of plastic, so we'll wash that. Right, let's, uh, do, do, do. yeah, oh my goodness. The amount of sort of crystalline corrosion that seems to be falling out of this is incredible. And one of those screws is completely rusted. Ah, lovely, right, okay, so. Right, there we go. I've got a cleaner workbench now. And let's see. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's quite that's quite impressive. It's corroded straight through the metal. I don't know if you can see that. Well uh, I'll zoom you in again. Look at that. It has corroded straight through the metal. That's just unbelievable. So that battery terminal is Donald Ducked. Right. Okay, let's get some, let's get a cup full of the wonderful pink neutralizing solution. So I've got myself a little bit of the pink neutralizing, the magic pink neutralizing solution. And uh, I am going to try my best to clean up this PCB, get rid of all of this oxidation, oxidization even, and uh, and then <laughs> maybe we can put some batteries in this and see how uh, see how we do. You never know; it might magically spring back to life. And then again, it might not. Right, I'll be back with you in a few seconds once I've finished all of this cleaning and neutralizing. Okay, so having cleaned things up as best I can, let's have a look at the other side of this little beauty. Look at that, a little custom L LCD panel uh, with the little rubber sandwich connectors there. I don't know if you can see those, but those little rubber pads, turn it around that way, there we go. That's basically like a little zebra, and uh, there's little conductive stripes going upwards in that direction, and sliced all the way down, dung, 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 like that. And that's what transfers the signal from the PCB to the LCD display. So it's actually quite important that the LCD display stays aligned there and doesn't move. Otherwise the wrong digits will be lighting. And then at the bottom here we've got a bunch of touch pads. And these uh, use little carbon inserts 
that are in those rubber buttons, which I'll show you in a few seconds, and uh, those carbon inserts contact these pads here. So I'm just going to give those a little clean up. On the bottom of these buttons, you can see these little pads. And effectively, they're carbon impregnated pads. And what they do is when you push the button, that little pad pops forward and it makes contact with those PCB tracks there. These, these connections are so pitted, it's unbelievable. This one more specifically. So uh, my neighbour was telling me that to get a replacement it's a hundred and twenty pounds. Wouldn't it be nice if we could fix it for it? Well I'll keep working on those because that's going to need that's going to need quite a bit of work but some um, the other thing that we should probably do is have a look at these Kodak batteries and find out what kind of state they're in. All right so Kodak super heavy duty zinc batteries yeah, I don't hold too much to these types of batteries. This particular one that hasn't leaked everywhere is 1.5 volts. This guy here, which is quite messy, where are we at? Let's have a look. 0.7 volts, so not particularly good. Right, I'm going to continue working on trying to clean up these contacts. Uh, and then we'll pop a couple of batteries in and see see what happens. Let's uh, just check these batteries that I've selected as potential candidates. 1.4, that's not bad. And this guy is 1.4, that should do the trick. Okay, these are uh, alkaline batteries. So, uh, you know what, I've just suddenly thought to myself, I'm going to solder this. There we go, that's how I'm going to fix this, because this is broken. So we'll put a dab of solder on there, and we'll also put a dab of solder on its nose here as well, so it makes good contact with the battery. And then, with a little bit of luck, that'll fix it. Right, let's fire up the soldering iron. Let's just give it a dab of solder to take on, the, on its nose. There we go. Yeah. Dab a solder on that. Okay, so as you can see, that is a little problem there. The problem is that is completely broken. But I've cleaned it up, I hope, as best I can. And what I'm going to do now. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is chuck a bit of solder at it, see if we can't, uh, see if we can't get those two bits of, of metal to stick back together. Yes indeed, it's cleaning time. Okay, chuck that in there, chuck that in there, look at the state of that, all that corrosion there. So uh, let's get rid of all of that and let's uh, give this a good old clean up. So after all of these cleans and mods, the question on a lot of people's minds is going to be, <laughs> has he fixed it? Um, so I'm going to answer the first question, the purple substance was this stuff here, methylated spirits. Um, and this guy uh, is WD-40. A big, big can of WD-40. Um, okay, let's, let's do it. Let's test this. Right, are you ready? Battery in that way around, one battery in that way around, 
Uh, nothing appears to be smoking. Is the screen on? <laughs> yes! Happy days. We can proclaim success. Look at that. Brilliant. Right, still not entirely happy with this uh, with this battery tab fix. I'm going to go back to go back to that. I'm going to revisit that. All right. So a little bit of patience, and there we go. We finally got a good bit of solder down on that battery clip now. So I'm happy that that is sorted. It's time to reassemble this into its box and give it back to its owner. He'll be happy. So there it is, ladies and gents, top tip. This was a broken Concept2 rowing machine computer. But great news, thanks to a little WD-40 and methylated spirits, some cotton wool buds, a soldering iron, a multimeter, a screwdriver, we've been able to repair this and get it all up and running again. Which is going to make my neighbour very happy because these are £120 to buy. So, thanks ever so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. There, I'm sure, will be more weird and wonderful tips, tricks, bits of fun going on. Ladies and gents, thanks ever so much for watching. Really appreciate a good old thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Go ahead and hit that bell button. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. If you haven't seen some of our other videos, go check them out. They can be quite interesting, mildly educational, and a little bit fun. Take care, people. Stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Cheers and beers.